Davis here in Bangor at his uh, gym, and we're going to ask Marcus a few questions about the sport of ultimate fighting. He's also uh, retired from boxing. Uh, how long have you been into the ultimate fighting, Marcus? Um, well, I had my first uh, mixed martial arts uh, fight uh, in about the year 2000. About the year 2000? Yeah. And uh, the sport has really took off in the last 10 or so years here in the state of Maine and around the country. Uh, what do you contribute that to? Well, I think that, you know, really the last couple of years, it's been because of uh, the uh, mainstream television audience being able to go on to Spike TV has brought, you know, that TV show, The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, that's helped out. Um, the fact that uh, they were able to get the sport passed in Nevada. You know, Nevada is like the fight capital of the world. And by allowing uh, mixed martial arts to happen in Nevada, um, and then allowing the casinos to bet on the winners, that's just completely brought it to uh, the mainstream audience. And uh, I think that that's, and, and, and a big thing too, is that before when it first hit the scene, it was looked at as a, you know, complete blood sport, violent thing. Um, with no rules. Well, now there are rules. There are even rounds where it used to not have rounds. So now, you know, the guys are fighting three five-minute rounds and uh, there are certain rules in place. Um, they've taken out headbutting where you used to be able to headbutt and, you know, uh, and, and have made it more of a sporting event. Another question, Marcus, is who do you think has done a lot for the sport as far as bringing it to where it's revolved to, to, to today? Well, um, I mean, the biggest uh, reason, I think, is because of what they call the Zufa Company, who ended up buying um, the UFC. The UFC was run by, uh, I think it was Sega, uh, I think it was called Sega Sports or something like that before. And then the, the guys that are called the Zufa Brothers, uh, Lorenzo and, uh, uh, oh, let's see, the, well, they're the Fertitta Brothers are their actual last names, but the company that they own is Zufa. Uh, they ended up buying um, the uh, UFC from the other company and then tried to make it go mainstream. And then, you know, for a while it was banned in all states to even hold the events other than a couple. And then you, the pay-per-view wouldn't carry it anymore. And now it's gotten to the point where now it's back on pay-per-view. It was back in more states. Um, and then... You know, all of a sudden, mainstream TV, you know, Spike TV picks it up. Now you can watch, you know, old UFC events, new UFC events, Ultimate Fight Night, uh, The Ultimate Fighter. All this stuff now is on cable TV, um, on Spike TV. So I think that that is what's really pushed it. As far as the stars in, in, in the fighting that have made it that way, I think that the biggest ones um, would be uh, Matt Hughes, Chuck Liddell, and Randy Couture, I th and now Rich Franklin, I think those four are your more household names now with uh, mixed martial arts fighting. You were also speaking earlier about a gentleman that has uh, brought all the different forms of fighting together into one, and you were talking about, about him. Could you give us a little bit of input on that? Sure. Um, a man named uh, Sung O Che. Um, we all called him Master Che. He came from Korea. Uh, in Korea, he was the first ever um, all-Asian kickboxing champion from Korea uh, because the all-Asian kickboxing championships were being won only by Muay Thai fighters because of their uh, strong kicking ability. And he was, even back then, back in the 60s, researching and finding out why those guys were kicking so hard and, and what was happening. And, and then he modified their traditional style so that he could fight better and uh, uh, more applicable to what they were doing and then he, he won that and then he was a uh, bodyguard for uh, one of the generals there and you know he was a very well-known uh, man in Korea kind of like they looked at him as we look at Muhammad Ali um, there he moved here to the States back in 1975 and he had started, a, even at, uh, earlier before that time, but he had started to develop a martial art called Che Shin Do. The actual translation of the word Che Shin Do is highest new way, is what Che Shin Do means. 
So Master Che had uh, decided, you know, there's five ways a fight's going to happen. People are going to be kicking, so that's kicking range, punching, punching range, trapping, which is the range of where the elbow or the knee meets the person, grappling range, which is actually stand up kind of chest to chest, and then ground fighting range, which happens on the ground. Those are the five ways a fight's going to happen. He looked at all the martial arts that dealt with kicking, punching, and those different ranges, took out the techniques that were the techniques that could be applied in a real situation were applicable to the real fight not the fancy flying kicks and stuff like that the garbage that doesn't work he wanted to use real technique he did that and developed this style that we call Che Shin Do and that was the uh, you know my last uh, instructor and I thought of the man uh, like my father I mean I truly loved the man and uh, you know he passed away uh, about almost two years ago. Right. Well, I guess from here we're going to have you uh, give us some more demonstrations with a couple of the guys you got here with you today at your shop, and uh, okay. we'll go from there. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Again, uh, we're here in Bangor, Maine. Uh, we're with Paul... Uh, Paul Bernard. Paul Bernard, which is a, a professional retired boxer, and he's going into the ultimate fighting. And Paul's going to give us some demonstrations here this morning in the ring. And go ahead, Paul. Well, I'm a, I'm a former professional boxer, retired now. I basically took up this sport. Uh, it's a sport of the future, basically. I wanted to learn all different aspects of how to fight on the ground, how to use Muay Thai, Thai clinches, and just to become a well-rounded fighter. When I first came in to see Marcus, I thought that I could come in and, you know, just with my hands be able to compete with these guys, and it, I found out it didn't work that way. You, you definitely have to be well-rounded and learn several different types of skills to, to compete or hold your own with these guys. It's a whole different world. So Marcus and the boys showed you right off the bat that you had a few uh, things to touch up on. Well, you definitely are thinking few things that I didn't know. I mean, if you take a, a karate, taekwondo guy, or even a pro boxer, you take him down on the ground, and he doesn't know how to fight on the ground, that's it. He's done. You know, it's just one-dimensional. So uh, today's athlete's got to be multi-dimensional. What led you to this end of fighting? What, what did, just because you have boxing career, you were finished with that, and you wanted to keep going, or? Well, Kind of. I just wanted to stay in shape and it just, you know, I've watched the fights and stuff on Spike TV, Ultimate Fight Nights and stuff like that. And I just found it kind of appealing and thought it might be interesting to learn this stuff and see what's going on with it. Uh, how did you do in your uh, boxing career? Well, I had uh, one fight in May, um, one knockout. I had an amateur record of 132 and 16. I used to fight for the U.S. Army. And I've had several unsanctioned fights in, throughout Europe, Germany, Spain, France, etc. Nice, nice. And you're a resident of Bangor? Yes, I currently am. So you wasn't born here? I was actually I was born in Bangor. I was raised in Howland, Maine, about 32 miles north of here. Yeah. yeah. I've lived here for the past 14 years or so. Okay, well I guess uh, you and the boys are going to show us a few more demonstrations here in a minute when we get going, and we appreciate your time. Okay, thank you, sounds good. Marcus and Mitchell and they're going to give us some demonstrations on ultimate fighting and here we go. Okay the first thing we're going to do is just one part of uh, mixed martial arts. This is the grappling end uh, which happens on the ground. Okay. <clears throat> go ahead and stand up. Stand up. Oops. 
Bixby. Wow, that was a good move. Now you get to see Mitchell and I going full speed using some of the techniques that I demonstrated before. Right now I'm on the top position, passing Mitch's half guard. Constantly looking to progress my position, to better my position. Trying to keep Mitch always on his back so that I can perform submission. I'm now side mounted on Mitch and I've gone to the full mounted position. Now I'm looking for what's called the knee bar submission. And there I am finishing the submission hold. Mitch is starting in the cross mounted position. And now I've escaped and made sure that I've not been caught in his, in his guard. And now I'm working for the arm lock. Because of my position, I'm also able to secure a triangle choke with my legs and also work the submission on the arm too. So there I had two submissions at one time. Starting from the cross mounted position where I am in a very bad position. Now Mitch has switched to scarf hold. And now I've been able to get up and once again Reverse the position. Looking for the arm walk again. Mitch knows that, so he's defending. Now I'm moving into the back mounted position. Mitch knowing that does not want to give up his back. Mitch is now holding the half guard. And Mitch did a good job of reversing his position. And I've scrambled out and taken Mitch back down to the ground. And Mitch is scrambling out. Here we are, turtled up. And now Mitch has been able to pull the half guard. Okay, uh, so this technique that I'm going to do is just called a simple Achilles lock. It attacks the Achilles tendon, um, and uh, it's all based on basically uh, the way I hold it technically and leverage. 
So what I do is I allow his foot is kind of my is my is my uh, signal that I've gone back far enough. Mm -hmm. As my body slides back, it runs into his foot and it can't go back any further. Mm -hmm. This is where my arm will come underneath mm -hmm. and hook his ankle. My other hand will go onto his shin, uh -huh. and then my hand that's on the inside will go onto my wrist. I'll pull my elbow in close to my body to hold the thing tight. You can see Mitch start to squirm a little bit. Yeah, better and than, then better I'll, than me. <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll apply a little bit of pressure. Okay. From here, I can move into what's called a heel hook, which is probably the most, out of all leg submissions, one of the most deadly submissions because it'll not only destroy here, but it first will destroy the knee before it goes down to the ankle. From here, I can go into a squeeze lock. I can go into what's called a toe hold. Um, I can go into another version of the Achilles lock. I can go underneath and go into, once again, another version of the Achilles lock. Um, if he tries to roll now, I can go into a squeeze lock here on his leg. So he can't go. So the yeah, leg submission is, uh, go ahead and get on all fours, I'll even show him the banana split. <laughs> if, uh, move back a little bit. You've seen somebody get on somebody's back in, in mixed martial arts. I can come out this way, hook his leg, turn him over, and split him right in half with this technique. Then I can go over here, take his hip out this way, I can still attack it with the toe hold, or I take my own leg, I hook his foot, bring it to me, take this leg, push my own leg away as it separates his kneecap, and I pull down <laughs> on his leg. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Marcus, so you just got done showing us some of your uh, demonstrations of some of your grabs and holds and yep. floor and stuff, and now you guys are going to do... Uh, some just some basic pad work. Just some pad work. Yeah, a little yeah. boxing. Um, and we'll add in some uh, like Muay Thai knees and stuff like that. Kind of blending the two together. Uh, Western boxing meets Muay Thai, so Thailand. <coughs> yeah, we'll just start out. Uh, just call them out. Just just run a regular normal pad routine. One two. One two three. One two three. One two. One, two. <laughs> One two knee. One two three knee. One two three knee. One two. One two three four. One two three four. One two knee. One two three knee. One two three knee. One two knee. One two knee. One two knee. One two three. One two three. style kick 
or a Taekwondo style kick. What I always say about those kicks are, those kicks don't end a fight. What they do is they tick off your opponent, <laughs> just make them angry, because they really don't hurt. Where a Taekwondo style karate kick is led by the, by the foot or the knee. So when I throw a karate style kick, my knee comes up first, or they call it flamingoing, or whatever, my knee will come up first, and then my, then my kick extends. That is using only the strength and power, really, of my muscles and my legs, and my joints and my knee. Whereas a mixed martial arts kick, which is stolen kind of from Muay Thai, the hip leads. So the power comes from my core, which is my whole body, my whole center, not from just an appendage that I have. So the kick is a little harder and a little different. So rather than having that snapping look, it has more power. The way this kick is done is that my hip leads the kick, not my kick leading my hips. My motion of the kick is started by the core and it is finished by the core, not by the foot. Like I said, a karate kick will be up and then out. Those, ki those kicks only anger an opponent. These kicks finish a fight. So that's the difference between a <coughs> MMA kick or a Thai kick and a traditional karate or kung fu or karate uh, taekwondo kick. Well, you've been able to see me, uh, the instructor, working the pads with Mitchell. Now you get to see the instructor working with a student. Here I have Mitch working on his jab, which is his lead hand, making sure that his jab hand is coming back. That is why I am reaching out and slapping to that jab side, making sure that his hands stay up while he's punching. Working on the one, two, three, which is the jab, cross, front hook. Now I'm going to have Mitch work some knees, putting his hands and knees together. Here, Mitch is doing a good job of not separating hands and knees, making sure that it flows almost as if it's one technique, not two different uh, appendages, <clears throat> rather just flowing together as one. Now we're working the uppercut. Now here what I'm looking for is for Mitch to allow his hips to start the motion and finish the motion. Uh, Mitch is using a little bit too much of his upper body and his hands rather than letting his lower body, uh, his uh, torso or his core if you will, uh, start the motion and finish the motion. Now we're back to knees. And here Mitch does a good job of allowing his hips to start the motion and finish the motion. Now we're going to work the lead hook with the rear knee. Mitchell's come a long way. He's been with me for about a year. And when he started, he had no previous martial arts training at all. But now, you can see he looks pretty good in a very short time. Yeah. 
again. Do it again. Get ready? Boom, 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 boom. All right, bitch, let's go. One, one, one. Here we go, second round. Once again, we always start with a jab. And then I am checking as I swing back at Mitchell to make sure that as he is punching, those hands get right back as fast as they can to guard his face, his chin. Now we're working some kicks. Working hands and working the kick so that they flow together. Just like that. No, no, no. Ready? Back. 
bitch. That's beautiful. That's great. That's it. Not, not three, not, not separate movements, all like one movement. One, two, three, back knee. There you go. Let's do it again. Three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. All straight, set up, nuts. Seven. 